look who's back. And with a special 500 subscriber, it's not an anniversary special, I guess it's just 500 subscribers. Let me take this stupid thing off. Yes, here in New York, it's still fear season. It's still government subsidized fear system. System. Season. Everyone is still afraid of the corona. What can I say? I think as I'm as I'm recording this, it's June um, 24th. And yes, New York City has just barely opened up to let people eat outside, I think. Uh, in Nassau, the, the, some, some of the surrounding counties have, uh, I think they're moving towards, I think you can have indoor business and, and some shit like that. I, I, I don't know what the hell it is. And look, as I've said, I'm not, I'm not going to make this about, I'm, I'm going to open up with Corona, but I'm not going to finish with it because this is a happy occasion. As I said in my initial videos, uh, when this thing, this, this pandemic, uh, it fi finally first, first broke, um, sure it's serious and, and sure it's a very contagious disease and sure it affects those of our society who are most vulnerable. Um, makes you wonder why our governor Andrew Cuomo decided to put COVID positive patients in nursing homes with those most vulnerable, but Hey, who am I to judge? He's a brilliant man, right? He's he, if you, you, you walk around New York, he's very presidential. They, they can't wait to vote for that jackass to be president. But I don't want to digress too much on that. It's a very dangerous thing because it is just so contagious. And if you have underlying conditions, it, it's pretty much, a, it can be a death sentence for you. I get it. The thing is, it's not the first time that that's happened. And I always found it a little too, it did never pass the sniff test for me as far as being politicized, because it was politicized from jump, okay? And now you look at the states that have opened, and wow, it kind of follows some type of political map, doesn't it? As to what, what states opened up and other states are still telling us to be afraid of everything. What, 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 what states are there? Let's see, what states are still telling us to be afraid of everything? Yeah. Oh, they're all Democrat states, aren't they? I wonder why that is. I wonder if this, would be, if this would be such a pandemic if Hillary won four years ago. I wonder if this would be such a pandemic if it wasn't an election year. The whole thing is just kind of striking me as plan B. Or is it C? Wait, was plan A, was that the collusion? And then there was, was Russia the, the, a different collusion thing? Or they were, that was plan B. Was plan C, I'm not really sure. Maybe, maybe Corona was plan C. And then uh, we're going back. The riots and everything were, was a, kind of a plan D. But now the riots are over. And again, I'm not sure. Do we go back to Corona or we just wait for Democrats to come up with something new? Look, if you lost somebody to COVID-19, it's a tragedy for your family. And every person lost, of course, is a tragedy. The thing is, enough already. People die. Not, not, I'm not trying to come off like Hitler or Satan here. But with some quick numbers, um, 8.5 million cases of coronavirus in the world, of, of which 447,000 died currently. And these, these are rough figures. Um, wow, 447,000 people died of this. That, that's unbelievable. Until you realize that there are 7.8 billion people in the world. Basically, this disease has a mortality rate of 0.01%. We're shutting down the world for this? Again, I, I said I wasn't a conspiracy theorist, but you know, this isn't a, a, a half-ass end-around political coup. This isn't an attack on Western economies and the global economy by communist China. It isn't really 0.01% a fatality rate on this thing. And we shut down everything. And again, as we open up, and believe me, up here in New York, for those of you down south in the free states, in the open states, we get nothing on the news now but how your cases, that the second wave is coming and how dangerous it is and how irresponsible it is for all you people like exercising your rights to actually live your fucking lives as American. It's a constant news story here. Now I think today, uh, the asshole Cuomo, along with the tri-state assholes that are ruining the Northeast of this country, decide that, you know, if, if people who visit from or if you visit the free states and come back, uh, you have to be like self-isolated or contain quarantine because again, we're we're quarantining healthy people in this country, not not quarantining sick people until they get better and recover. That's what's going on up here with 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 coronavirus. And again, I, I'm sorry. What it begs the question: Yes, people are still dying around the country. Yes, and and yes, although there's survival high survivability rate, and yes, it, it you know you don't want to sacrifice an older generation. You don't want to sacrifice people with 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 underlying conditions. You have to do all that. Again, I beg the question. I, I, I wish I had some of these. I wish I'd get on camera with some of these these political figures and ask, "What is your end game here?" Because this flattened the curve. We didn't flatten shit. The virus came. 
cases rose. It infected who it was going to infect. At the behest of our government and the media circle jerk, it's everyone, a lot of us hid underground for the whole time, and, and uh, I was one of them, I had to go to work still. And the virus is here now. It didn't pass like a, a swarm of locusts, and now it's all good to venture out and, and replant the crops. It is now the world plus coronavirus. So it came, cases rose, it infected who was going to infect, it killed who was going to kill, and then it continues to spread. The people who hid, on, like here, if, if you will look on TV, you're a hero for staying at home, sitting your fat ass on a couch and ordering Papa John's and no touch delivery. And the pizza goes in the oven, no one fucking touches it until it comes to your house. Um, but, you know, but buy your Lexus though, and a guy who drives up with gloves and will leave it in front of your house while you stare out the window and gaze at your little baby sleeping. Oh, well, this, is, this is the new normal, right? While all that was going on, when you ventured out, well, it's the world plus coronavirus now. So you're going to get it. Oh my God, cases are spike. Cases are going to double. Well, double from what? From 25 to 50, from 100 to 200, from, from 500 to 1,000. Again, look, look at the overall numbers. People die in this world. People die from heart disease. People die from AIDS. People die from car accidents. People die from murders. Oh, and with the anti-police sentiment that I'm going to get into later, people die from murders a lot more in this country now, aren't they? People die from things. And the question I have to ask is, what is the end game? What's the end game? A, a, a vaccine? Well, isn't there a flu vaccine? And tens of thousands of people die of the flu every year. And when's the, when's that when's that vaccine coming for the common cold? By the way, this is a virus. Okay, maybe they'll develop a vaccine, and big 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 farm will get rich, and some will get rich, and that's all fine and good. The way it's going now with the mandatory shit that's happening, and this, just the total suspension of the Bill of Rights that's going on in New York, at least, it makes me wonder when that vaccine comes out. Are they going to try and force me to get it? Because I'm not going to, and not because I'm like some anti-vaxer. Okay, I, I tr truly believe in science, and if I need medication, I'm going to fucking take them. I just don't need it. I don't have that underlying condition, and I, I'm healthy. So why would I take a vaccine to somebody that I don't need? I don't get the flu vaccine every year. I'm not in that age group yet. When I get old enough, you bet your ass I'm going to take the flu vaccine. Now, I don't get it. So what, what is the end game? Is it November 4th, the day after Election Day? Is, is that the end game when this is all going to suddenly be fine? You know, I, it's just, it, where does it end? It has to stop at some point. You have to venture out into, into the world eventually because you can't just let the entire world economy collapse and you can't let the American way of life collapse. And that's how I'm going to end coronavirus because apparently it's, it's just it's going to keep on going with no matter what I say. As I alluded to, uh, 500 subscribers a couple of weeks ago. Now I don't know what the number is. And again, I, I realize that 500 subscribers is pathetic compared to the thing. I look at some of these channels and they got tens of thousands and millions of subscribers. And look, what am I? I'm just somebody that I, I, I can barely do any content anyway. Uh, and the fact that, you know, uh, I'm getting subscribers, it, views is amazing and subscribers is even more amazing. And you know what I've noticed? Since Corona uh, hit, I've been, I picked up a lot with, I haven't made a fucking video because there's nothing. I mean, I could talk like this to you all the time, but really how much of this do you want to get? I haven't been able to do any shooting, any real content at all, and I'm picking up a lot of subscribers on Corona, which which tells me I, I'd like to think that uh, I did something right in my previous videos, but I, I know what the actual answer is because I'm experiencing it myself. You're stuck in the house, especially in March, April, and May. You, you, you're so fucking bored. You, I, I think I've reached the end of the internet. I've watched absolutely everything I can watch on YouTube. I'm starting to watch like Star Wars theory videos now, if, if, if that's anything to anybody. Um, so yeah, I guess some of you discovering me, and I guess some of you uh, out of sheer boredom, and some of you saying, oh, you know, maybe this idiot has something to say. Maybe he'll have something to say in the future. Um, so thank you very much, Chad. I do appreciate it. I don't really know, since I couldn't really do any real shooting content, I figured, what can I do for a 500 uh, episode? Now, you know, as, as I mentioned in a lot of my other video videos, I'm a big fan of Paul Harrell. And whenever he hits a milestone, he does one. And a lot of his milestone ones, he does like most ask questions. I don't really get questions. Oh, he does a lot of, uh, he, he introduces himself. And so his resume is, is much more impressive than mine. But I will say, you know, who I, I try not to tell you anything about what you should do for guns. I give you my opinion. So for those of you who are asking, well, who the fuck are you going to give me your opinion? Really, I'm no one special. I mean, I, I guess my biggest claim to fame when it comes to firearms is that I spent 28 years in New York City Police Department. I, I, uh, I only recently retired at the end of 20, the first day of 2019. It was my first day as civilian. I came on in 1990. A little over 28 years. Uh, in that time, I uh, spent almost all of my time in uniform. Uh, the first 17 years of which were on the street. Uh, I started off in uh, South Jamaica, Queens, the 103rd Precinct. Uh, that precinct's claim to fame, besides the fact that it was a fucking disgusting, drug-infested shithole, was that it was the precinct where uh, Eddie Byrne got killed. Um, from there, uh, in 1999, 
uh, I had a, a, a disagreement with with how the precinct uh, should be policed, if if that makes any sense to you. And unfortunately, I had a disagreement with my commanding officer, so I had the old uh, commute therapy, the old the old bridge toll therapy. They uh, right after I I had purchased my first home in in Nassau County, New York, they decided to transfer me to the Bronx, which again is not a very long drive. Uh, the way New York City is set up, but is a, a, a toll bridge involved. So I, I got the I got the Throgsnack Bridge toll therapy, uh, and that's pretty much for those of you who who are on who are on the NY, who are actually on the job. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Probably happened to you. For those of you around the country who are civilians, and for those of you from other departments, yes, that is in a, in a city like New York with all those boroughs with with, with some islands and and surrounded by bridges and wars, a lot of toll bridges and and inconvenient places to get. Uh, it's a common tactic of the NYPD to make a point by saying, where does he live and where can we put him? And I, I, I found out what that was. So I spent the next uh, six and a half years of my career in the Bronx, in the, in the very south tip of the Bronx, uh, the Mott Haven section of the Bronx, it's the 40th precinct. Uh, the only claim to fame the 40th precinct has is that it's a filthy, disgusting, drug-ridden ghetto. Um, I spent enough time there where the department forgot about me and they, they, they let me advance my career and I decided to uh, take, a, take a shot at promotion. So I had one lucky Saturday and I achieved the rank, my highest rank on the job, I achieved the rank of sergeant. Uh, from there they sent me to the 79th precinct uh, in, in Brooklyn, uh, the, the, the bedford Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn. Um, th that bed -Stuy section of Brooklyn, especially the 79th Precinct, is most known for the fact that it's a filthy, disgusting, drug-ridden ghetto. Um, so, you know, I, at least I, 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 my, my, my whirlwind tour of the five boroughs of New York City uh, continued. In fact, uh, a funny anecdote, when I was in uh, uh, the, the, the basic leadership course called, called BMOC, uh, you spend like uh, five weeks or so in the academy after you get promoted. Uh, by the way, they, they promote you at the end of the course, so they don't have to pay you as a sergeant to sit there. At the end of the BMOC, we got uh, we get our actual ceremony. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's an actual promotion ceremony. But then before they send us actually out, we go back to our little uh, auditorium classroom in, in the academy, and they give us uh, we get to shake hands with whatever fucking chief. Uh, I don't know if she was a chief at the time. I was one of the highest ranking women on the job. I think her name was uh, uh, Pazuti. Her last name Pazuti. I don't know if she was Chief Pazuti or Inspector Pazuti. She might have been the commanding officer of the police academy at the time. And I go up and I, I shake her hand. And she goes, congratulations, uh, wh wh where did you get promoted out of? And I said, the 4 She goes, oof, uh, where, where, where they send you to? And I said, the 7 She goes, oh. And I said, that, so that's pretty much, it explains my career in a nutshell. Uh, after only two years in, in the 7 9 and believe me, they, they were dog years uh, in the 7 9 uh, I finally, finally ran into an old friend who turned into a pretty decent hook for me. And uh, I got pulled into uh, the, the, uh, a, a command, uh, an interior command in, in headquarters. Uh, like a real-time crime center. At the time, we fell under the umbrella of the police commissioner's office, and those were good times. But when you when you fall into the PC's office, uh, that means you're uh, you're you you have uh, pretty much anything you want uh, on the job. Uh, after few, only a few years of that, though, uh, we got absorbed by the detective bureau. And I, at that time, I had like maybe 20 years on the job. I, I hit my 20. Um, but since I was going through a spectacular divorce at the time, I had st I stayed on uh, past 20. And um, well, I found myself, through no fault of my own, in the detective bureau. I spent 20 years trying to avoid the, to avoid the detective bureau of New York City Police Department. And wouldn't you know what, I come to work one day and they say, congratulations, you're in the detective bureau. But, it, you know, we did what we did. In a real-time crime center, uh, you know, as course of duties, all my time in uniform on the street was either on, you know, just your, your, your radio car patrol guy uh, to, uh, I did a lot of, uh, SNU units, precinct, precinct narcotics units. I did those in, in both boroughs, Queens and, uh, and the Bronx. I, I did a lot of uh, precinct narcotics and conditions in both boroughs too. And I finally, um, uh, when I got promoted as a sergeant, I did, uh, I got a squad assigned to me and then I, 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 I didn't want to do anti-crime, which was recently disbanded. And I certainly didn't want to do SNU because I knew how that fucking unit operated. So I, uh, I just, I took a condition spot and that's where I was, where I finally got my ass off the street. Um, and I finished my career in a real-time crime center, which was a detective bureau. Well, it was an investigative unit, investigative support. We worked with all the various detective bureaus throughout the city of New York and um, all, all, all the squads, all, all the numbered squads. And we handled, we assisted them on every case, but we specifically jumped in on um, uh, citywide, you know, real high-end um, 
media type of cases, you know, uh, the big news cases, the 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 the, the, the old police shootings, you know, the the, the high pro high profile. That's a fucking word I'm looking for. The high profile stuff, things like that, that we we assisted on. Uh, we were mostly investigative support. You know, we, we were on the back end doing the um, doing the, um, the 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 deep high end uh, computer searches, but also we would respond. We had a response van. And uh, I, I, you know, go out on, on certain scenes, you know, d- depending on, on the need. And that's where I finished out my career. Uh, Firearms-wise, how does that make me anything with firearms? Nothing. I, 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 my biggest claim to fame with that is that I, I carried one. I, 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 I lived with one for at least eight hours a day. I lived with one all the time. I lived with one. I carried one uh, for eight hours a day. Uh, I, I found myself in, in uh, stressful situations with firearm. I found myself in shoot don't shoot situations with firearm. Um, that's really what I know about firearms. I mean, I, I started off, you know, they, they issued me a 38 revolver. Uh, I've, it's, been, it's all been, I've told you my history of my guns in other videos. Um, the, the, the first shots I fired my first day at the outdoor range in Rodman's Neck in the Bronx was the first time I fired a handgun. What can I tell you? Uh, I, I found that I had a taste for it. I found that I had an interest in it, and I moved them through the various uh, uh, calibers and models that the NYPD authorized, and I purchased ones obviously for myself, as some that you've seen. And uh, you know, I became b- fairly proficient at it. Um, I, I'm not—I don't. Again, you've, if other videos you see, I, when, when I don't—I'm not going to sit here and give you war stories. Uh, I've said before, um, when you look at my career, I uh, saw a lot more action than a lot of people. I saw a lot less action than a lot of other people. You know. Uh, I'm, I'm not here to blow, you know, to, to build myself up a little sunshine on my ass or say I'm some type of action hero. I only really throw in specific events and none of them are, are I, I get as non-specific as I can get with a specific event only when it pertains to a particular topic. And again, look at some of my other videos and you'll see what I'm talking about as far as if I said, you know, a decision I made or a tactic, what I did or, or what I thought or why I feel that a gun should do a certain thing or behave a certain way or have certain aspects to it. That's all based on my experience of carrying on the street and the instances in my personal life where I felt that a, a, a gun was, was necessary to have on me. That's what I throw it in there. So you're not going to get specific stories about the NYPD from me. However, because of that, because of 28 years in law enforcement, I definitely have a slant into how I see the world. And that slant is now, I, I, I can't help but at least give you something now uh, as far as what the fuck is going on in this country right now. Now, these things happen in cycles. They always do. And this obviously, uh, you know, again, this is my opinion. My opinion, we're dealing with a, a new political animal that's going on in this country in the last four years. Um, and the, 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 the Democratic Party now has stopped being the party that I knew as a kid, a party that I, some candidates that I actually voted for earlier on in my life. Because, you know, I, I, I'm, although I'm law enforcement, I, I'm not hard right. I'm, I'm very moderate on a lot of things. I'm hard right on some things. But I'm also, I have left leanings on some things, too. And this is not the party that, this is not JFK, uh, Democratic Party. This is a, a not even veiled anymore. In New York, not even trying to veil. This is just flat out socialist. This is actually trying to subvert the country is what, what's going on right now. And they'll burn this country to the ground just to win an election so things can get back, so can get back to business as usual. Again, this is my opinion. You don't have to believe it, okay? And what I'm seeing now is, you know, after after they lock us in, for months and dehumanize us and tally off death tolls on the TV screen about this pandemic that's killing people. Like I said, when I said the eyeball test, let me ask you something. Not counting, again, this is a big not counting, but not counting if you actually lost someone in a nursing home or something like that. For the other 7.88 whatever billion people in the world, if you, if they didn't shut your world down and make it impossible for you to get haircuts, by the way, this, I, this is, I, the reason why I don't look like Jesus Christ right now is because I had an illegal haircut done a few weeks ago. Now it's, it's still bushy, but at, the, at least you, not what it would be. If they didn't shut down everything, including the gyms, you know, so I'm wearing my red gym shirt, I'm going to go work out after I make this video. If they didn't shut down anything, would you have, if they, if they didn't make you wear the mask, if they didn't stop you from going into stores unless you, you know, showed that you, you, you were a sheep and, and had the fear face on, um, would you have noticed anything going on? Or would you have just thought it's, it's a particularly aggressive flu season? And be honest with yourself, you don't have to comment, but would you even notice that things were going on? Because I'm looking around, I never saw anybody staggering down the street and dying or, or uncollected bodies laying there with open sores. I didn't see planes falling out of the sky. To shut down the world, it just didn't pass the eyeball test. And that's, after months of that, 
and everyone's losing their fucking minds and going crazy and getting fat on the couch, then what do you do? Well, you do what you always do. You wait for some negative police interaction to happen and then light the match and watch it burn, okay? And that's what happened. What, what we got in Minnesota, we, we, we got, that, that, we got that, that career criminal in Minnesota that got killed as a result of that police action. Now, before you lose your minds, that guy, George Floyd, he did not deserve to get killed. Whatever the fuck he did, did not deserve to get killed. That cop fucked up. That was a bad move. That was bad judgment, bad tactics. It was bad fucking everything, okay? I'm the first online to say it. Thanks, jackass. What the fuck was that all about? And look, I'm coming as, for, for those of you watching me who never were in law enforcement, I can make this criticism because I've been there, I've rolled on the ground with a criminal. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to roll in the dirt with somebody who's really fighting at you. And I know the, the irrational, though temporary, hatred you get for that person that you're fighting. I know the feeling. I've swung for the fences with a flash like this big in my hand, not even seeing where I was hitting. I could have cricked, caved someone's skull in, okay? I know that feeling. And once you get that fight, once you get it down, once you get that motherfucker cuffed and you lay on top of it, yes, I've laid on top of people. Yes, I've, man, when I was in Snoo, you should have seen all fucking tactic. What, what, what do you think our tactic was when you roll up on somebody and they pop the fucking crack in their mouth and try and swallow it? What do you, what do you think we did there to prevent them from swallowing it? Hmm. But, you know, I, I digress. I know the feeling, okay? But when it's over, it's over. You can't put your knee on the fucking guy's neck for nine minutes, dude. You can't do it, okay? Now, with all that being said, and it was fucked up, was it murder? Um, well, you have to prove that in court, aren't you? Because, again, I might make some of your heads explode out there, but that's just because someone died at the hands of somebody else, it's not always murder. You have to look at some things. What was his mental, what was his culpable mental state? Did he intentionally kill this guy? Or was he acting with a, was he acting recklessly? Was he acting so recklessly to have it, so as to have a depraved indifference to human life? Look this shit up. Is this murder or is it manslaughter or the Minnesota equivalent? Is it? I don't know. But see, the thing is, we're not going to know until he has his day in court because despite what the the radicals and the anarchists and the Democrats want when it concerns anyone but them, that pesky constitution guarantees us certain rights. And this man, this officer, will get his day in court. But the way they're acting, you you would think that, you know, that they, which leads me to my other point. These protests, well, not protests, they're, they're fucking riots. They're orchestrated riots. Yes, some of them are protests. But even, let's forget the, the anarchist-induced riots that, are going, that, that were going on, okay? Let, let's forget that for a second because there's no motive there. There's people who want free shit out of Target. And there's people who just want to watch the country burn, okay? That, I'm, I'm talking about the misguided people who actually walk out there and, and just kneel down and they're lighting candles. And they're so against police brutality. And, and we're marching to end, to end this, uh, this terrible cycle of, of racism and 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 that that word racism and the other word that that former President Obama loves to out systematic racism that's so prevalent in this country. Well, I'd say, motherfucker, you were president for eight years. What'd you do about it? But forget about that. The systematic racism that everyone can see in this video. I say to myself, well, is even if it's murder, it, it, it barring any audio or video of him saying I'm going to pick that black guy and kill him because I hate black guys. Is it racist? And again, well, some heads are exploding right now, but how is it racist exactly? Because the cop was white and, and, and George Floyd was, I forget the cop's name, George Floyd was black. Is, is that automatically makes it racist? And if that makes it right, even if you want to take that step, how does it now become systematic racism? I look at systematic racism is that the entire department, that's their policy to be racist and the outlying local government, that's their policy to protect, to, to protect the department that is systematically racist. Well. After this event, that cop was immediately fired. He was almost immediately charged with murder. The other cops that seen who wasn't even touching the guy, they were also charged with murder. Um, seems to me the system is working. I mean, you know, systematic racism would be that if the, that video came out, if the if the Minnesota if Minneapolis police department said, no, that looks good to me. And then it goes up to the Minnesota Attorney General, and, and the Attorney General says, no, that's fine, I, I, I got no problem with this, that, that looks like a good arrest. Sorry, 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 Floyd. Well, then that might be systematic racism. That, that, that's the system not working. That's what you march for. That fuck, I'd even lie. That's pretty fucked up. That's what you march for and protest for, to change that system, to raise your voice to change that system. 
What system exactly do you want to change? He was immediately fired, immediately charged with murder. The fact that he is innocent until proven guilty, well, that's the fucking Constitution, folks. What, what exactly are you looking to change? Do you want to change so that if you're a cop, after an incident like that, you have to drag your crucifix up Main Street wearing a crown of thorns where you get whipped, only be crucified on, 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 the, on the corner there? Is, is that what you, you want to do? Is that the system that you want? Because I, I'm, I'm failing to see the systematic racism here. And then it, it, it's, you know, that's what my whole problem is. And then from there, of course, cue Al Sharpton. Cue the New York, you know, as we, 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 we voted for Dick Bag de Blasio twice and we elected asshole Andrew Cuomo twice. And then in the, 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 at the midterm elections, my, my fellow New Yorkers decided to hand the state assembly and, and, and the state senate to the Democrats also. So now basically anything these progressive socialists want goes through. So, you know, because of that in Minnesota and because in Georgia some piece of shit criminal fuck grabs a cop's taser, tries to shoot him with it, gets himself blasted, oh my God, that's murder too. What what the blue fuck is going on in this country? That's murder too. So then a week after that, in New York, where nothing's going on, um, we're signing a bill, we, 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 more restrictive law enforcement bills, where, you know, we, the, a, a, after the asshole piece of shit scumbag governor here signs it, he hands the pen to Al fucking Sharpton? Is that really what's going on in this country? And the rest of you, cover your ass for a minute. To, to the people in New York watching this, what the fuck, man? Really, seriously? You really vote for this shit and it becomes so shitty here that you move down south and you vote the same fucking assholes in down south. What the blue fuck? I'll say it again. What the fuck? So, as a law enforcement person for 28 years, that's what I'm talking about on my 500 anniversary, my, my 500 anniversary, my 500 subscriber special. Just what the fuck is going on in this country right now as a law enforcement officer? And now this is my message to guys active on the job right now, all throughout the country, especially NYPD, but all throughout the country. If you're still unlucky enough to, to, to be on the, on, in uniform out on the street, resist the urge. If you work in one of these democratic cities, if these democratic controlled states and cities that have been part of the democratic machine for the last five fucking decades, and, people, and the people who live there wonder why they're living in squalor and, and crime, if you're driving around in one of those, okay, roll up your windows, turn on the air conditioner, drive away. Drive the fuck away. Obey, if you have to go there because of an one call, obey all traffic signals. And when you get within a block, turn your sirens on constant, have your lights going on to warn the people that you're coming. Okay, so whoever has to get out of there can get the fuck out of there. Go home. To people in the NYPD who are still active, if you're driving around this fucking city with the 4th of July coming, the, the, the windows on your RMP work, right? The air conditioning on your RMP works, right? Because if they don't work, put the RMP out of service and get another car. They work, right? Roll them up. Put on the fucking air conditioning. Drive the fuck away. A community gets exactly the kind of police service that it deserves. And what the community deserves is determined on election day. And I think we've seen a lot of places in New York and some of these other blue states that they basically tell you exactly what kind of police service they want on election day. Okay? So that's my rant on that. Now, Turn the page. I, 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 that, that was that was cathartic. That had to, are you breathing with me? You feeling this? Okay. On to guns. Something that I, I much prefer to talk about. Well, as I said, uh, you, you can't do anything unrelated in New York uh, unless you're the way to fuck up state. Uh, I, the ranges are all closed, and uh, you can't go outside and shoot. Well, you can go outside and shoot, but you know, in in in, in, in unless you're Antifa, you can get locked up for it. Um. So what am I going to do? Well, I do have one new thing to show you here. And then I'm going to give you a couple of ideas of where I think I'm going to go with this channel from there. Channel. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I had one more uh, addition to this. This, had, as some of you recognize, let me, let me not kill everybody through the screen. That would have been easier with front slide serrations, huh? Um, this should be uh, recognizable to a lot of people out there, well, all 500 of you who subscribed. Uh, this is my new home defense gun. It is, it is an exact replica, except two generations later, of my duty gun. Uh, Glock uh, 19, I carried a generation two uh, for, for all my, for, since 1994, do, do the reverse math, I carried it for a long time. And um, after, now that I'm retired, I wanted to get a, uh, a home defense gun, not a nightstand gun. I've talked about that until I was blue in the face. A home defense gun. This is a gun that I grab when I'm awake now, I have a chance to set up a defense perimeter, 911 has been called, and for some reason or another, I need to challenge this person in my home, okay? And for that, I wanted high capacity, reliability, and familiarity with the platform. So I went with this. 
and I went with, rather than just refurbish my Gen 2, a couple of things on this that I wanted. I want an accessory rail, which Gen 2 didn't have, and I want I like the finger grooves and, and get rid of that stupid front cutout, which Generation 2 uh, had, and that's what I got. And I've talked it through, They've been, I've changed the sights, and I put the extended slide slide release on it, and I, I, I love it. I can't play with that enough. Didn't do anything to the trigger. I added this fucking super bright light. Look at that, huh? Uh, like it, like it, like it. I did one more modification to it during COVID, and it took forever to get here from the Glock store because, you know, I guess... M mail trucks get sick too. Um, I put a mag well, the first gun I ever had with an added mag well. Can you see this? This is the mag pull. Uh, I don't have the box anymore. I got sick of keeping it. I didn't know when I was going to make this video. Uh, it just it snaps up there and it goes in with an Allen key through that hole, the lanyard hole in the back. And I like it for a lot of reasons. One, for me, it enhances the grip on the gun. It really locks in that pinky. Uh, and, and gives me a nice solid grip on the gun too. It really does function. I mean, that, that's not a bad, let me get, that's not a bad well there. It gets right in, uh, but it looks very good. So, you know, in a situation when, if, if I'm in such a shit storm in my own home, my own bedroom, that uh, I, I have to go to a magazine change, uh, well, now I'm ready to go. And this really is, this gun for what it's, it's designed to do, its purpose anyway, it's never really gonna leave my home. Uh, I'm not going to carry this stupid thing, and um, so it's not going to leave my home. So I'll actually have magazines available. So in that, in, that, in that particular case, then yeah, quick magazine change what I want. The only downside to it is uh, remember how much I bitched to you about the half moon cutout in the front of the new Gen Fives. So that's why I went to Gen Four, and how much I bitched about it on my uh, on my Generation Two. I said I always felt it on my pinky. I was always aware of it, and I hated it. And I think it wasn't necessary because once these magazines became steel lined, they didn't swell or bulge, and you know it was no problem. I, I never had in my entire life have a magazine fail to pop out, even on malfunctions. And I said even if I did, I would just extract it from the side, not that thing in the front. Well, this kind of eliminates that. It doesn't eliminate, it makes it very difficult. This is not a lot of purchase here for me to grab. So, yeah, you could say that I've opened myself up to a possible problem in the case of a catastrophic malfunction with magazines and drop, but I will say that I've carried a Glock 19 in one way, shape, or form since 1994, and the next time the magazine fails to drop when I push this button will be the first time. Okay, so you know it's one of those things where, yeah, I, I'm, I'm. It's something I should keep in the back of my mind, I guess. But I should also keep the possibility that I might get hit by lightning in the back of my too. I'm not going to base a lot of my life decisions on on that on that fear, though, right? So that's where I, I'm going with that. I'll let you know when I do get to the range of this, and I fucking will get to the range of this. I'm going to slide through magazine changes. I'm going to go with the light drills. I'm going to do the, the up and down, the boom, boom, boom type of thing. I'm going to use different modes on the light to see what we like. I'm going to have a two camera setup. It's going to be fucking spectacular. But you know all this. I already said that to you. So on to the next subject. I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start introducing... Um, as a comparison, I'm going to start using some of my wife's guns. Uh, I've, I've, both of these guns are loaded, so I'm not going to do tricks with them. This, you know, is my uh, my pretty much everyday professional carry. My my Sig uh, P365. Uh, if you you suffered through that flat trigger install video with me, uh, you know uh, what that's all about, and also you know the difference that it made in the times and the splits on that nightstand test after installing it. And even on that video, I said to myself, you know what, is it some of it, how much is the trigger and how much is the fact that I've just practiced so much with this gun that I've gotten that much more proficient with it? Well, how can I tell? Well, just like the real channels, I, look at that, I got another one. This is the wife's Sig P365. As we all know, it's the exact same gun, except she still has the curved trigger. I didn't have enough balls to go through that process again with her gun. The only difference is obviously this little guy right here, that little guy, she goes with the safety. Uh, look, at, at, at her at her experience and, and her, her level of comfort with the gun, she prefers uh, safeties. Um, I do not. Uh, I never carried a gun with a safety. I think a safety is only there to fail, but that's me. Again, we, we we're, all, we're all products of our own training and experience. In my training experience, I don't get along with safeties very well. Refer to that uh, nightstand, I don't know, the, the, the nightstand testing where I did with 1911, where I failed to thumb a safety off in a fucking public range in broad daylight. That's why I don't like safeties on guns. You know, uh, I like just have it ready to go as it as it comes out of the holster. Another thing I'm going to do since I'm I'm going to go that route is um another one of my wife's guns. This is her first gun actually, uh, the old um 
380 shield. What the fuck is this gun called? Uh, it's called the 380 Shield EZ. It was a big gun when it came out. Uh, and I tell you, it, it, in the, the small amount of time I got behind the trigger on this gun, I could see why. Uh, I really like this gun. It shoots really well. Um, it, it just has a nice little, it has a, a, a grip safety, which I don't mind when it's hinged on the proper side. It's, it should be hinged up here. Down here, I have actually, because as you, some of you even commented, I hold a lot, every one of my guns, I hold like a revolver. And remember, I always said with revolver, you don't, you, know, you, don't, you don't really put your thumb up, you, you web your hand up in the tang on a revolver, you kind of hold it down here. So I do that for a lot of things. And on 1911, that's no problem. On this, a couple of times, I've had, how am I gonna do it? On this, a couple of times, I've actually had it not go off with that, with that grip safety, uh, because I, I didn't get my web up on there. But that's a minor thing and that that would go away with training if I was to carry a, a gun like this. Um, again, this, I think, I don't know at the time when she got it, it only came with a safety, but she likes safeties anyway. Uh, nice, easy slide. And it's, uh, it, it is hammer fired. A, a nice trigger. Let me see if I can remember how to, uh, uh, you do this, you do that. It's so safe, you know, got to pull, pull the trigger. And yeah, you see a little guy in there? That's a, it's a hammer fired gun. And uh, it, it's a nice, it's a nice little trigger that, that's, wow, okay. I thought there was a trick. But maybe I'm getting to confuse the other one. The follower on the magazine. It's a nice gun. It's a pleasant shooting gun. And it's unusual because now you see 380s. This is what a 380 is now, right? This little thing, the size of a deck of cards. This, this is loaded. I'm not going to flip around it. Um, I mean, look, 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 look at this. You know, this thing is... Um, 380s now, this thing weighs 14 ounces or 13 ounces, and it's got a 380 caliber uh, cartridge in it, and it's, it, it, it's, let's face it, 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 it sucks ass shooting this gun. It, 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 it's jumpy, it's snappy, it sucks ass. It, this grip that this texture here starts cutting my thumb because it's so snappy. It, it, it sucks ass, and not, not, the, the, not, not, not the good ass, you know, not, 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 not that kind of ass, like dirty ass. It sucks dirty ass uh, shooting this gun. And um, I don't particularly like it. It's a strictly a self-defense gun that I take to the range just to remain proficient in it when the ranges are open. This gun is pleasant. It's a big 380. It's a little heavy for 380. And its size, its barrel length, it is just a pleasant shooting gun with nice sights. I do like it. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to do a little compare times accuracy on both of these. And maybe I could bear that out with science as to, uh, you know what, maybe a full-size 380 it's nothing to really sneeze at. I mean, I know it's nobody's favorite caliber, as I've said, but not a bad gun at all. And I think uh, the only thing I can think of now to finish up is, since I don't feel like buying new guns and I can't do it anyway, I never gave this guy the, the love it deserves. You've only seen me, I think, put six rounds through this gun on that nightstand test. This, of course, is my Ruger SR 1911. And um, I'll tell you, I love this gun, and I think I should do a video on it. Now, obviously, this gun was introduced uh, a few years ago, so it's, it's no the, the book has been written on it. But um, I love it. It is a great shooter, like all 19, like most 1911s are, I guess. Uh, it is of all the guns I own, it's the one that just fits my hand the best. The grip angle on a 1911, how it fills my hand, even with the, the narrow single snack grip, the point ability, the shoot ability. It is by far the most accurate gun. Well, it's a gun that I shoot most accurately, so therefore I'm going to call it the most accurate gun that I own. It's the gun that I enjoy shooting pretty much the most. It is pleasant. I can really put a 45 caliber slug absolutely anywhere I want with this gun. So I think I'm going to do a series on it. Uh, and by series, I mean one video. But I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do speed drills, accuracy uh, drills with it. I'm going to do the, the nightstand test over again to see if I've improved with this. Although I haven't really been shooting this that much. Um, and again, I, no, no one can leave me alone. Um, I haven't been shooting that much. But maybe I think I'm also going to do a uh, maybe a living with a 1911 type of, uh, of video. Maybe I'll do a series of videos on it. Of what it's like to actually have this be your gun. Um, 
you know, uh, and I, by, by that I mean you're a carry piece. You know what I mean? I know summer's coming. I don't know what summer's here now. I, I don't know where I'm going to put a full size 1911. I'm not going to shove it up my ass. So maybe this is the wrong time to do that. Maybe by the time at the rate I come up with videos, maybe it'll be fall or winter, and I'll you know put in a shoulder rig or maybe I got some 1911 holsters. I'll carry. Maybe I'll even carry it at work and freak people out and see what it's like to carry a full size 1911 and just living with it. Okay, and then obviously. Um, a lot of shooting to go along with it because it's a sweet piece and uh, I will get more 1911s um, so if you want to uh, give me send me a winning lottery ticket so I can buy more uh, that's what I'll do so that's about all I can have for you right now because I'm, I'm very light on content uh, maybe you know what I'm gonna do that's right this is what I'm gonna do um, oh before I forget before I forget one last stop at the coronavirus thing um, I don't know how it is where you live, but in New York, it really is the culture of fear out here, and the the the, I, the, the mask is like the new the, the the new Nazi armband. Whether or not you're wearing it or not, it identifies you as a member of the party, or actually maybe it should be it should be the the, the, the yellow star that they that they made the Jews wear. That's what the mask is here in New York. And um, have you seen in your states yet? Even the free states, even at the height of it, have you seen as you're driving along um, the person in the car next to you? with the full mask on and the rubber gloves on and the windows rolled up in their own fucking car alone that's the key well even someone in there but alone alone in their own car fully masked up as if they were going to remove asbestos from the fucking air vents as they're sitting at a fucking stoplight have you seen that yet what the fuck is that all about i mean are people that they're that dumb you you, you bought into it you you are you bought in you at that point you bought in okay that's what you're, you're on call with rubber gloves. So oh, oh, I'm so safe. So you tell me that every day you're, you're going to wipe down your entire car after that because you touched everything. So why you now? How, how about this? How about you sanitize and wash your hands every time you touch something? If, if you want to work, just do it. Do that. I, I wanted to get that out there before I forgot. And the other thing, I already forgot that other point. So I guess it really wasn't that important. Um, that's really that, that. That's all I got for you. I, I, I can't give you much more. Uh, I will start churning out the videos again. Once I can actually get some real content going in my content, it'll be shooting. And I, I remember what I was going to say. Uh, you know what? I think just for the fuck of it, I'm going to attach a random piece of cutting room floor shooting footage on the back of this video just so you can hear a gun go off, okay? So if you sat through 41 minutes and 54 seconds of this rambling horseshit, thank you very much. If you're one of the 500 plus people who subscribe to this silly channel, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully at some point I'll be able to get something out there worth watching. Uh, other than that, uh, questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. Uh, keep subscribing if you want. If you think I'm totally full of shit, let me know. If you like what you see, let me know. Um, or not. Other than that, you know, listen, uh, wear your masks and uh, let's, uh, let's all make it past Election Day. Signing off.